Cyber crime is a very, very important topic in today's date and time. The news reported uh, that in Pakistan alone, in the last three years, the number of cyber crimes have increased by 83%. Now, with the advent of internet and internet becoming ubiquitous and becoming an essential part of the lives of almost each one of us, it is only uh, understandable that that also led to an increase in cyber crimes. Now, we want to look at in this lesson that what cyber crime is uh, and you know what are its categories, what are its types, and then what are some safety tips through which we can remain safe from the cyber crime. The main objectives of this lesson include an exploration of cyber crime, uh, creating a basic awareness about cyber crime, gaining more knowledge about cyber crime, and understanding the risks of harmful online behavior. Now let's, before we, you know, look at uh, the, the downsides of cybercrime or how we can protect ourselves from cybercrime, let's first see that what exactly is cybercrime. Now, as in regular societies and regular day-to-day -day lives, we have, uh, you know, we were subjected to crime. We have robbery, we have theft. Similarly, when the birth of internet gave birth to a cyber society, which is the virtual variant of an actual society, Naturally, that cyber society is marked by cybercrime. Cybercrime can also be referred to as a computer crime, and it is a crime which essentially involves a computer, a mobile, and a network. The computer may be used as a weapon for crime, or, it, or the poor computer may itself be a target. Now, uh, when we say that the computer itself is a target, that means that we are uh, you know, using a computer to attack other computers. And then when we say that computer is a weapon, then we are actually using a computer to you know, commit some real world crimes. Now who, are, uh, who is committing this cyber crime? The ones who are committing cyber crime are called cyber criminals. Now they are, they are those individuals who are doing crimes by using computer as a target or as an object. Uh, again, let's look into a bit more detail what exactly is cybercrime. Uh, now, for instance, when you purchase a home, it comes with a door and a lock. You always ensure that the door and the lock exist and are working properly. You may even purchase security systems. Likewise, your computer system is almost like your house. And security tools are needed, uh, in, just like how in an actual home you need a door and you need a secure lock. Similarly, your computer, which is synonymous with your home, in order to protect it, you require security tools as well. And if someone breaches into your computer system, uh, you know, and accesses all your personal uh, accounts, tampers your data, it is the criminal who is committing that particular crime. Uh, let's look at some of the categories of cybercrime. But before doing so, uh, you know, I want to share with you that the cybercrime first originated in the US in the 1960s. Uh, types of uh, cybercrime, or let's say more specifically, examples of cybercrime included that you know somebody broke into the system of Brooklyn College, New York, and tampered with the academic transcripts of students. Uh, then, moving on, in year 1978, Pacific National Bank security database, because it was hacked, that led to a loss of millions and millions of dollars. So, uh, you know, these are just some examples of cybercrime which started in the uh, 1960s. So technically, cybercrime is not a new concept, but its frequency with, uh, with you know, passing time has become much higher. So now, let's look at the categories of cybercrime. Cybercrime can be against an individual, which means that the type of crime is in the form of hacking, uh, identity theft, bullying uh, against a certain individual. Similarly, cybercrime, can be against property also, which means that just like how in a real life, you know, a criminal can rob a bank, can steal somebody of their money. Similarly, uh, in, in the cyber world, they can steal a person's bank detail and misuse the credit card details or, you know, to, to take money out of someone's account. They can access someone's password and again, you know, use those passwords in order to, let's say, steal or rob money from them. Then moving on, cybercrime can be against the government also. Now, although this one is not as common as the first two, 
where the cybercrime is committed against an individual or is committed against property. However, nevertheless, it does exist. In this category, the criminals, they hack government websites, military websites, or they circulate a certain propaganda. A cybercrime against the government is also referred to as cyber terrorism. After looking at the categories of cybercrime, let's look at the types of cybercrime. Cybercrime can be in the form of hacking. Hacking, you may have all heard this term, is in simple terms illegal access into a computer system without the permission of the computer owner. Then the second type can be software piracy. This crime occurs when a person violates copyrights and unauthorized uh, and you know and, un and does an unauthorized use of software or someone's intellectual property. The third type could be cyber stalk stalking. This is a crime in which the attacker harasses or threatens a victim using electronic communication such as email, instant messaging or messages posted to a website or a social networking site. Uh, stalking, cyber stalking essentially means that you know uh, somebody is following your activity or the internet or in the physical world and actually using that to blackmail you or harass you or misuse and abuse you. Moving on to other types of cybercrime that can include the use of a malicious software. Now malicious softwares are internet based softwares of programs that are used to disrupt a network. The software is used to gain access to a system to steal sensitive information or data or cause damage to software and hardware. You know, malicious softwares could include, you know, sending in viruses, sending worms, sending Trojan horses, uh, email bombing, sending you with a lot of spam emails, uh, email and let's say, you know, finishing up the storage of your email. These are all forms of cybercrime as well. Uh, the fourth form can be an identity theft, where a criminal assesses data about a person's bank account, about a person's credit card, debit card, or his or her passport or other ID information, and then uses that to, you know, to either to further commit a crime or, you know, uses that to steal money or valuable possessions from an individual. Another type of cybercrime can be cyberbullying. Cyberbullying is when the internet and related technologies are used to bully other people. What is bullying? It is a deliberate, repeated and hostile uh, manner in which, you know, a intimidation or fear is inculcated into a, pe into a person. Cyberbullying uh, can be done where text messages, images, personal remarks posted online as well as through hate speech. Uh, moving on uh, and looking into other types of cybercrime, another one includes denial of service attack. Now, what is a denial of service attack? It involves flooding a computer resource with more requests than it can handle. This causes the resource, example, for instance, a web server, to crash, thereby denying authorized users the service offered by the resource. This, as especially the females may be aware, that during sales seasons, uh, you, you know, you have uh, the website of certain big brands uh, where, uh, where certain individual mafias, let's say, or certain individuals send in so many requests or, or make so many attempts that to genuine buyers, uh, it, when, when they try to access that website, they're not able to. And, that is, and then that prevents them from actually buying that thing firsthand and are then forced to buy that as in the black market. So that is just one example of a denial of service attack. Moving on and looking into other examples of uh, cybercrime, it includes email spamming and spoofing. Uh, you all may have experienced that sometimes there are emails, random emails, which are sent out to thousands of people. So, you know, those are the kinds of email that one can receive. Then it is done so that, uh, you know, uh, that you receive an email that appears to have originated from, uh, from one source whereas actually it was sent from another source. You may have, you know, seen those examples where you see that, you know, somebody from your friend's account on a social network site is asking you for money. That too is, let's say, an example of a certain cybercrime. Another type of cybercrime is computer vandalism. Computer vandalism is that you're damaging or destroying data rather than stealing or misusing it. Uh, when you're damaging and destroying somebody's data, 
this is called computer vandalism moving on well i could give you you know and more examples of cyber crime and list down various other cyber crimes but you know uh, while crime exists it is important to look at some of the safety measures or precautions which individuals or individuals around them can take in order to prevent themselves from these attacks of cyber crime for instance firstly on your computer systems use antivirus software you know this is the basic fundamental step which actually prevents your computer system from a lot of attacks from viruses trojan horses worms then secondly insert firewalls thirdly uninstall any unnecessary software is available fourthly always maintain backups especially of important crucial data especially of data which you were had to, which you had to create with a lot of effort further never send your credit card number or your passwords to any site which is not secure moving on avoid sending you know your photographs or videograph uh, or, or videos especially those of a personal nature to uh, to strangers lastly do not open emails from strangers uh, or you know emails which from their subject or from their title seem to be suspicious this especially prevents your system from unwanted attacks uh moving on don't respond to harassing or negative messages and comments uh you know responding to harassing messages or you know cyber bullying does not solve the problem so do not do that it just makes you part of a certain vicious cycle further uh, like anything educate yourself learn about safe use of internet learn about inter internet privacy and try to implement it keep your operating system up to date if you have any updates please do include them change your passwords frequently and use hard to guess password further don't share access to your computer with strangers and even with acquaintances sometimes you know uh, we are often subject to cyber crime because those people whom are not uh, whom we do not get fully trust but their acquaintances and not realizing the threat of cyber crime we end up sharing our computer systems our passwords with them so definitely do not share your computer systems and your passwords and your details with strangers but also be very careful and mindful when you are doing it with the acquaintances if you have a wifi network please protect it using a password and disconnect from internet when it is not in use so when we looked at uh, this uh, this lecture or this, let's say this lesson uh, which was an introduction to cyber crime we were able to realize that just how a regular society is subjected to crime a cyber society which is a virtual variant of a regular society is subjected to cyber crime uh, there are various types various kinds of cyber crime however in order to remain safe in order to protect yourself in order to protect your loved ones please make use of antivirus softwares firewalls uh, security patches uh be careful with the you with with sharing your credit card details with opening suspicious emails with you know with the use of your passwords uh because uh, it's always best to practice these safety measures than become a victim of a certain cyber crime